Welcome back, everybody, to the Blazer Victory Podcast. This is your co-host, John Duncan, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Steve. Wait a oh. minute. Man, it's going to take me a while to get, uh, <laughs> get get away from saying that. Guys, we um, actually have a new co-host on the Blazer Victory Podcast. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and just break the news. Uh, Darian Smith is going to be our new co-host, uh, joining me um, every week for the Blazer Victory Podcast. And uh, Darian, you know, I'll let you, you know, introduce yourself in just a couple seconds. Um, but basically, for those that don't know, you know, Darian Smith actually played uh, on UAB football just a few years ago, and he was a, a center. Um, and I guess, Darian, I'll let you just take it away, buddy. Just, you know, let let the audience know just a little bit about your, about your background and kind of what you bring to the show. First of all, John, um, I appreciate being here. But I, I really appreciate how you said a few years ago, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was being nice. <laughs> you, you was being real nice a few years ago. So, yeah, um, Okay, I'm I'm Darian. Um, I joined the Blazer football team back in you know, December of '09. I came um, trying to get a jump on on spring training, and um, of course I played center. I was undersized and everything, right? So I had to come in. I had to uh, scrap and claw my way, and um, use my intellect and you know try to get gain whatever advantages I could that way, just being an undersized player. Um, I came in as a junior from uh, Kapaya Lincoln, um, Mississippi, Colin College. uh, And it's been history. I fell in love with the city. I played um, under some great coaches. It was some turbulent times at that time, but to see the program, see the program where it's at now, it's been amazing for me. And um, I played with some great players. This city has embraced me. I have, I have embraced this city. I still stay here. I love it here. I built a family here. My wife was actually a mascot here. And, oh, wow. Um, yeah, she was the mascot. And, uh, you know, we fell in love. Um, I know players. I know former players. I know current players. I know parents of players. Um, I know Steve, I know I'm just so familiar with the program and the city and everything. I just fell in love. So I'm, I'm UAB through and through. Yeah. So and it's safe to say, Darren, that you, you just bleed green and gold, man. Every day. I bleed green and gold. Me, my family, my kids, everybody. Yes. Well, man, I'm, I'm just so excited to have you, you know, on the show. You know, we've talked, uh, plenty of times before leading up to this moment. And I'm just excited about, you know, just not only you being a former player, but just your, you know, everything, you know, you you know, the X's and O's in and out, you know, how to analyze games, you, 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 you know, you know, everything that's going on on the football field. So I, if, if you guys are listening to this, you know, I think, you know, it's going to, it's going to hurt, you know, losing Steve Irvine, Steve, I know you're listening to us right now, uh, but I'm just <laughs> so excited to have Darian join the show. And I just can't wait to see, you know, how the Blazer Victory podcast just continues to grow, you know, for this year and years to come. Just uh, welcome aboard, Darian, and, you know, thank you for joining us. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, thanks, John. Um, I really hope to bring um, some expertise on the X's and O's and um, the game within the game. Right. You know, um, it's so much that goes on within those lines that sometimes, you know, if you haven't played at that level sometimes um, that you're not able to like able to really see the, all the nuances. And so um, hopefully I'm able to translate that so that the listeners can really see that, that part of the game. Um, being a center, you have to be able to control a lot. You have to know a lot. That's, that's the main part of being a center, just uh, being able to control the guys up front, just, um, Basically, you're the the visionary for the line, and you got to keep everybody connected. And um, a good center watches a lot of film, um, watches a lot of film on opponents, know how to break down film. And so that hopefully I'm able to help translate that here so we all can have a, a, a very good knowledge of what's going on with our own team here. Definitely. Well, Darian, we've got to get into something because I, I feel – almost like a failure for not knowing this, but so someone told me that your nickname well, was and is Pee Wee. So you got to let the yes. audience know, like, what is yes. this Pee Wee? Yes. Where did it come from? And just, just, just tell us a little about it. <laughs> Man, when I, I, when I tell you, when I first got here, a lot of guys didn't even know my real name, you know, like, you know, you have 
the weight lifting sheets of who maxed out at what. And right. all of the sheets had my name as Pee Wee Smith. I'm like, I, started, <laughs> I started looking at the coaching staff like, do y'all know my real name? Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, uh, yeah, so the origin of that nickname is so unclear to me, honestly. I asked my mama about it, right? And um, she said that when I was a baby, when she would call me, she was just messing around with me. She said, first of all, I was this small kid with this big head. <laughs> so, you know, so she said she would mix around and call me Pee Wee, and I would laugh. And, um, she said that it just kind of stuck with me since it made me laugh when I was little. It kind of stuck with me. So, and then it become it became kind of this oxymoron because I guess I grew into that head eventually, right? I, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not the smallest of guys, so um, it just became this oxymoron. It's like, oh, this this big dude is. That's who Pee Wee is, you know. So <laughs> it, it it just stuck with me. I think it was easy for people to kind of, you know, remember who I was, and uh, you know, I embraced it. I like it, so I don't I don't mind if if uh, listeners, if y'all see me out, you want to call me Pee Wee, I'm totally okay with that. Darian Pee Wee doesn't matter. <laughs> so it's safe to say, you know, the guys still today, if they see you, they they still call that's, you Pee Wee. That's all they call me. I, <laughs> ha- half of those guys still, I believe, don't know my real name. Wow, <laughs> they, they, they just call me Pee Wee. So, nice. I, I but I, I'm I'm fine with that. It, it brings some kind of familiar familiarity for me. It's a it's a family thing. So nice. I like it. Yeah. Well, good. Well, um, guys, you know, just like I said earlier, excited to have Darian aboard. Um, I, I know he's going to bring a lot uh, to this podcast. So I'm excited uh, to you know, for, for you all to listen to it, you know, especially when we start getting into this, you know, previewing the offense and the defense in a couple of weeks, you know, getting into fall camp next week, you know, fall camp starting soon. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm excited to, you know, hear what Darian has to, you know, to say, cause he's been through that, you know, he went through fall camp. Um, he, he's been through it. Uh, probably some rougher times, you know, back at those old facilities compared to what the guys have now. <laughs> but uh, hey, I was just telling some of the guys, I am so jealous. I'm telling I'm so, you, dude. I, they don't know how good they have it. <laughs> they don't. They do not. I saw uh, Will Riker. You know, he was just placed on the the center now. Will mm-hmm. was placed on the Remington Award watch list, right? I saw right. he had this this cool graphic all on Twitter. I'm like, man, like <laughs> the first thing I retweeted and said was like, I don't think I got anything. <laughs> like, <this> is, uh, <laughs> I was on the watch list, like, but no, uh, I'm not jealous. I'm so happy that I was just able to be a part of building something so special. It's, I think we're going through the shutdown and everything, um, going through that period, and just the the connection from the fan base. It's it's more. It feels like more than the fan base. That's what draws me to this team, uh, to this city. It's special because it is. I I don't know any other that kind of went through what we went through, how we went through it. No, and, nobody uh, has. Yeah, it's unique. Right. It is very unique. And to see how loyal everybody was to this program and to see it building into something so special, the potential is limitless, right? Right. So it is it's something special. Definitely. Well, before we get uh, into discussing just a couple of topics that we were going to talk about today, I did just want to shout out Steve Irvine one more time. Steve, I know you're listening, buddy. Just thank you so much for these last couple of years, Um, not only doing the podcast with me, but, you know, just being a good friend. Um, You know, Steve's not going away from the UAB football program. Um, He's actually uh, been announced as the head sports editor for 1819news.com. So he's already. Congratulations, Steve. Yes, and and he is already putting out stuff left and right. So definitely go check out his work at 1819news.com. And just thank you again, Steve. Uh, You know, as I've told you before, don't be a stranger. You know, if you see me before a game, make sure you say, hey, like you always did. Okay, Steve? (laughs) (laughs) Steve is a pro as pro. Steve was there when I first came aboard. Steve has always been kind and nice. He was never, he, he always wanted to show us in the most positive light as yes. possible. And um, he keeps thorough notes. He is very articulate and knowledgeable about the game. I've always listened to Steve. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations, but Yes, and we're going to miss him on the pod, but I'm glad to see, you know, he's going back doing what he does best, you know, just back in the sports journalism world. So, world. so congrats again, Steve. Um, but Darian, We've had a lot of things happen <laughs> since uh, I last recorded with Steve back in April. Um, right. 
I guess the first thing we need to talk about is, you know, Bill Clark all of a sudden, you know, saying that he's going to retire. Um, you know, it came out that, you know, Coach Clark has had back issues these last few years that have just gotten worse. Um, now, I, he has just come out of his surgery. You know, he was able to get the operation done. Uh, mm-hmm. Coach Clark, if you're listening, we all wish you the best um, and, you know, right, to a right. speedy recovery and uh, get you back on your feet again. Um, but without said, or with that being said, uh, Bryant Vincent was named as the interim head coach. Uh, Darian, uh, what are just some quick thoughts or observations about, you know, basically handing it off to Coach Vincent to be the interim head coach while Clark is uh, out? Yeah, so, you know, on the first note of, like, Clark, you know, retiring, man, that was – have we seen any news that kind of hit us out of left field like that? Wow. I'm telling, I'm telling you, man. So <laughs> I, I was on a family beach trip with yeah. family and friends, and I had left my phone in the in the hotel, and I came back that night, and I had like a bajillion calls, and I said, "Oh man, I thought somebody had died or something." And I'm looking right. at my phone, and I'm like, "Whoa!" Like if you would have given me. I don't 50 to 100 guesses to say, hey, what would have happened? I don't even know if that would have been one of them. That was like, in, crazy. It was yeah. so crazy out of left field. I just remember it was, I was just a regular day, you know, at work. Yeah. And like you said, I um I just came, I came back from lunch or something. I can't remember. I remember I was eating. I don't know what time it was. I just remember coming back and I thought it was a, I thought something was wrong. I, you know, I went on Twitter. And I can't remember who I – it probably was John Goodman when I first saw. Mm-hmm. Uh, I looked, and I'm like, retire? Wait, you know, they, uh, did he – you know, I, then you start scrolling, just trying to refresh your feed, like, eh, this ain't mm-hmm. right. Right. Why would, he, why would he retire? But, man, you said it – you thought somebody died. It felt like a deal. In the it family. did. It man, did. Man, I was – it hurt, you know. The, the, the guy that led us through so much, the reason – he is probably the biggest reason why we are in this position now. Oh yeah, hey, you know? without Bill Clark, UAB football doesn't exist anymore. Like if you go back exists. to the twenty four, if you go back to the twenty fourteen season, if he doesn't come in twenty fourteen and get that program to bowl eligibility, I just think everybody just kind of is like, oh well, I mean, we're gonna miss UAB football, but we're not gonna rally as hard. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, I'm a diehard through and through. But mm-hmm. I mean, the way that program was sliding, you know, down. We didn't have a leader. We didn't yeah. have a leader. He was the guy. Right. I th- I think it was just God sent. Yeah. You know, he was the guy. And then not only that, but to stay with the program and go through it. I know he had offers. I was. Oh, he did. Rumors. He did. Yes. Everybody was hearing rumors about, but it was something about being here that he wanted to stay here. And mm-hmm. lead us through through that, and um, I I think he deserves a statue here. You know, he d- oh yeah, he does. And I think too, Darian, it goes back to what you said earlier. You know about how the UAB fan base and just the Birmingham community is loyal. I think you know Bill saw that loyalty and said, you know, okay, there's something there. There is something here that we can you know stay and build upon. And by goodness, he did. I mean, he you know he's taken us to a new conference. He's, you know, we've been bowl eligible every single year that he's been a head coach. We've been to a bowl game or at least been bowl eligible. And you got this brand new stadium, got the brand, you know, the practice facility. I mean, the, with the pavilion, the legacy pavilion. Right. It's I beautiful. mean, beautiful. yes, beautiful. without him, none of this happens. Right. It's state of the art equipment. I've been in there a couple of times. I'm like, I'm amazed the nutrition programs and off season when you go home. It's so many details in the program that I'm like, man, I did, I thought we would get here, but I didn't think it would be so fast Right, we would get to this point that we had the, the facilities and the staff that we have. Um, but with that being said, like, I was, it's still kind of murky to me, you know. Um, now, I'm no doctor. I'm not a surgeon. I'm not even trying to act like I know exactly what his injury is know what it affects but i was under the assumption like maybe you could just you know have the surgery take a year off and come back but i don't yeah. like, like i said i don't know what goes on um on the medical side of things you know um you know and i know bill character i'm bill clark his character is probably the most up tier character guy you can have but i mean just what he 
what he led us through and how he stayed loyal to the city. I mean, it speaks to his character in itself. Oh yeah. You know, in a, in in a in a state of college football where it seems like, you know, coaching is a carousel and everything is a business. Mm-hmm. It's about dollars and, you know, what your legacy could be. So if you can move up, UAB is one of those programs that could could have just been a stepping stone for him. Let's be honest. Yeah. It could have been one of those because it's mark marquee enough to get you in that in that, you know, uh the limelight. And then to say, hey, I can take this SEC job at Mississippi State or something, you know? Right. And, um, I can keep moving, but he did not do. He did not do that when he had all the opportunity in the world to do that. And he right. stayed here. So I was, man, I just hope everything is okay with his back. I was thinking like, oh, just have the surgery and come back. But the but the language, the verbiage that's being used is like, no, retired. Yeah, you know, is and um, so I, I I did want to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, my fa- I mean, so being a a long time UAB fan, and you you just can't help but to get paranoid about mm-hmm. like, oh man, is the board of trustees involved again? Did did something happen like behind behind the scenes? Yeah. I still ha- I haven't been told anything that you know something was done behind the scenes. I really do think at least speaking right now, July 2022, I I do think Coach Clark did have some serious back issues. I I, 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 I do know that is legit. Um, Mm -hmm. And and now I'm, Darren, in my personal opinion, I do think that there's a chance, you know, after this season, maybe the 2023, that if Bill wants to come back, he can come back. You know, and that's, but I just don't know if he wants to come back or he might just be, you know, done or, you know, he maybe maybe in his mind, he said, you know, I've done pretty much everything I can do at UAB, which I mean, I guess, you know, to some people that would be a very fair assessment. But I mean, I, it's just kind of hard to right now think and talk about UAB football and not have it associated with Bill Clark, because I mean, Bill Clark is UAB football. UAB football is Bill Clark. And I mean, like you said earlier, the man is definitely getting a statue. He's been so nice right. to me every single time I've talked to him. He's always taking the time to, you know, just say, hey, and, 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 you know, Bill, if you're listening, we really hope that you get get well, have a speedy recovery. Or Jennifer, if you're listening, please relay this to Bill. Um, but we um, definitely hope he comes back. Um, but I guess let's let's transition from Coach Clark to mm-hmm. Coach Vincent. You know, he's the interim coach. He's been with Clark for a long time. So he, right. you know, he knows – you know, Clark, how he operates, you know, how practices go. Um, I mean, even go back to the high school. level. You know, he's been, you know, he was a with the all-star game that they had, I believe, in uh, Mississippi or somewhere. You know, he was on Coach Clark's staff. So he goes back years, you know, and he was on the – he was OC in 2014. He's been the OC under Clark uh, at UAB uh, since 2018. Um, so I think – I'm kind of excited. You know, of course, I – we're going to miss Bill, and I certainly hope he can come back. Um, but I'm kind of excited to see what the offense can do, Darian. And I don't want to get a whole lot into this because we're going to save it a little bit for our future episodes, uh, you know, going to next week when we talk about fall camp starting and when we discuss our offensive preview. But I don't know, man. I, I, I kind of just – I'm excited to see those first couple games and see, you know, what Coach Vincent's mindset and what his plan is, what play calling might look like. Um, mm, so right. I'm, kind, I'm kind of excited. I'm I'm very excited because um one thing one one thing that's a staple um of Bill Clark, like I said, I won't get into too much. We'll save it for the, the offensive preview. But one thing that's a staple that's always been a staple of Bill Clark, you kinda associate him with being conservative. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna be conservative. He's gonna it's probably not gonna be the play that the fans wanna see per se, but it's gonna be the right play. You right. know, he, he he plays a certain way and we, you know, we run the ball, you know, we're going to take shots, mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're going to punt, you know, everybody <laughs> remembers, everybody remembers UTSA. Oh, you know, why do you got to bring yeah. that up, man? <laughs> <laughs> it was just the, the best example, you know, yes. but, but at the end of the day, you know, he's going to trust his defense Um, he and he's going to, he's going to play a certain way. Um, I do wonder if he'll... Brian Vincent, I'm wow, I'm curious to see will he open it up? Like, will we take a couple more shots? Will we 
not just be so dependent, run heavy. Like, does it? Does he leave his stamp on the team? You know, will we be able to see his mark of how he wants to run his offense? Because we all know that the head coach makes the final decision. Right. And the and the head coach, you have to play within the scheme that he wants to play with. You know, you you have as a play caller, you have the the ability to pick plays from the sheet that he gives you, you know, like, mm-hmm. hey, I, I, I want to keep it here. Now they just do whatever within these reins. And so you I, can be, you can be overruled at any point too. <laughs> at any point, like, no, 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 we're not going to do this play action. We're going to run this ball. You know? Right. <laughs> so I, I do wonder, um, just kind of, we'll, we'll be able to see, I know over the years, sometimes some people have been frustrated with play calling, you know, yeah. offensive, offensively, so I do wonder we'll we'll be able to see the real Brian Vincent. Um, we'll be able to see what he. I'm I'm excited. You know I'm excited to see if he's gonna bring um, a more of a gunslinger mentality. You know I don't want to move away all the way away from our our identity. Right. I would I wouldn't mind diversifying it. So you know like we have two two good really good quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. And we and we have a lot of weapons around them, and we'll get into that. But uh, I I, I want to see. I want to be able to open it up for Debo, you know, so everybody won't you know won't stack in that stack it in so much on us and, and to stop the run. I want to keep them on their toes. So I'm I'm excited, man. Definitely. Well, we do just have one more topic that we want to go over uh, on this episode, Darian, and that's just realignment. You know the. I feel like it just keeps everything just keeps shifting, unfortunately, moving to more of like a power two conference and then everybody else. But I, I don't think we're going to get there for a while. I mean, it, it, obviously, you know, Conference USA, you know, UAB is obviously leaving after this year to go to the American along with, you know, other teams. But, right. you know, Conference USA just had, you know, three teams, uh, Southern Miss, Old Dominion and Marshall that just left to go to the Sun Belt. It seems like. Everybody is just, you know, trying to reposition themselves to, uh, you know, get get to the better conference each year. And I, I guess I just want us to talk about because, you know, you've got uh, USC, UCLA moving to the Big Ten. John, you've got, I, I, I was just about to ask you, there's been so much moving, and so <laughs> much rumors, man. I'm like, where are we? Like, oh, like, my what gosh. Teams, yeah. Like. Where 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 the, where is UAB? Are we are we in the Pac-12 right now? Like where where is everybody <laughs> going? And like what's going on, man? It, and you know you got people flying from you know all across the country to play each other. Like you got rivalries being dissolved because mm-hmm. of, it's crazy, man. I you got to catch me up to speed. I can't even remember who is where and why or who may be going. <laughs> yes, and I will say, Darren. Hey, and listen to to our, to our uh, people listening to this uh, podcast. Be careful what you see on Twitter because I did see. <laughs> I forgot it was somebody on Twitter was like you had me to pack twelve, and I had to say, oh, I man, I haven't it. heard that from anybody. But I mean, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but I mean, no, but no, it's, that don't make any kind of sense. But it does I would believe it. I would hey, believe it. You know? I mean, you've got USC and UCLA going to play Big Ten and play Maryland and Rutgers. Like, I mean, you tell me what kind of sense does that? It doesn't make any. It's a. It's a. It's a straight business move. It yeah. is. It's TV and money, I, man. That's all it is. TV money. You gotta. You gotta find a way to get some competition in there with Ohio State, I guess. <laughs> and, you know, uh, but I guess, man. I, and, and, you know, like in, in Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC in a couple years, too. But I guess I just want to talk about from a UAB perspective what we think. Um, I, I do not think. Me personally, I don't think UAB to the AAC is going to be UAB's permanent place. I, no. I think UAB, not just as a football program, but you look at basketball with Anna Kennedy, you look at these facilities. Basketball just got a new practice facility like you've got. The All potential. Ba- yes. Like, so I, I think everything seems to be moving really quickly right now, but I mm-hmm. do think things are going to slow down uh, temporarily. But I do think, you know, hey, five to six years from now, you maybe could get that call from the Big 12, if it still exists, or from the ACC, if it still exists. Like, there is so much potential for UAB as an athletic program and for Birmingham as a city I mean, it, I didn't have this on our notes to talk about, but you, you know, you, you, Birmingham just hosted the World Games. Birmingham Man. had proved has proved 
that they can host, you know, all these people. Like, why would a conference not look into Birmingham and saying, OK, well, SEC has Alabama and Auburn. Why don't we try our hands with UAB and see, you know, get that Birmingham TV market, get everything right. and try it? Man, since 2010, I've been going on the UAB potential rants, you know, all <laughs> UAB, all the program has ever needed was adequate support. Yes. That's it. That's all we've needed. And it and it's been mainly from, you know, the, you know, we've had issues with the board of trustees and mm-hmm. so it's been mainly from within that we needed that support. Now that support is seemingly coming in droves. Right. Um so hopefully that's still the case from within. Uh, me, you know, me or you, we can't speak to what's going on on the on the inside. Right. But but from what we are seeing with the program, we are winning titles. We're co- we're in contention every year. We are bringing in great players every mm-hmm. year. But the city, the growth in the city, as as you mentioned, if I'm a mark, I'm looking. If I'm a a, a bigger conference. I'm looking at seeing what's going on in Birmingham. And then you mentioned the TV market. We are football. Birmingham right. is football. Right. Here. And um, so if I'm looking, I'm like, man, they're not, not only is football, it's basketball. Andy Kennedy, what's going on? Man, man yeah. <laughs> man, like they, they, we, they, they got a lot going on. The, the support, fan support, more fans come in every year. Uh, we keep converting them over, right? Yeah. Um, one of one of the mo- one of the things I'm most proud of is I remember when I was going to school, I used to see a ton of Alabama and Auburn gear. Yeah. Every- everywhere, I everywhere, and it was used to burn me up. But now I look around, starting to not starting to see. I am seeing a lot of green and gold. I'm seeing bumper stickers, and mm-hmm. I'm seeing when it's one stickers everywhere on restaurants. I'm seeing. People see me, I, I work at UAB Hospital, it's my day job, and people just see me out in that gear, and they like, whoa, they want to mm-hmm. talk UAB football and UAB basketball. That was not the case. I want people to understand the importance of that. That was not the case 10 years ago. People, no. Yeah. People could care less. But now I get it so much everywhere I go, everywhere mm-hmm. I go. So just to see the program growing, in, I don't think that, I agree with you. Five to six years. I mean, the the potential that this program has, mm-hmm. we can we could be on a UCF type run. Exactly, and that's exactly what UCF. You know, before people don't remember how bad UCF used to be. Like UCF, <laughs> I mean, they went zero and twelve one year. Like they, this was a team or a program that was down in the dumps. They were playing in an old stadium. Um, and granted, you know, it, it took investing. They were able to get their own, their brand new stadium, the bounce house. They mm-hmm. made investments into the program, got, uh, you know, better coaches, and then just kind of took that next level. And who's to say UAB can't do that same thing? And I think so, we are on so the in, path to doing that. I just want to ask you, so in your opinion, what was the deep thing that you think that helped turn UCF around? And that you think can be applicable in our situation. Okay. Well, I think it's a couple of things. I do think it was the investment in that new stadium that they got, which, mm. you know, they built it the right way. It's uh, from what I hear, I've never been, but I've heard it's a fantastic venue to see a sporting event in too. But another thing I want to get to and get into is they started winning big games. Like they mm. started beating those big teams. And I guess, I want to segue this into UAB starting to get those big ones. You know, you look at the bowl game last year at a top yeah. 15 BYU game, a team yeah. that nobody had UAB winning. Like, in fact, I remember on ESPN, one of the analysts, I can't, or I can't even remember their name, but had like the most confidence that BYU was going to destroy UAB in the bowl game that he said it was like his <laughs> number one loss. Oh uh, yeah. The confidence meter, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. UAB went up there and I mean, Played them toe to toe and beat them. So it is about Darren, you know, taking that next step and getting these big wins. Obviously, right now we've got to still focus on competing and winning conference championships. That's this year in the conference in Conference USA. That's uh, next year and beyond in the AAC. But mm-hmm. also winning these big out of conference games. You know, like UAB's got a great opportunity at LSU this year. You know, UAB goes to Liberty this year. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you are so, right. 
so that you, if we're able to continue this stretch of winning most of these big wins, people are going to continue to take notice and continue to say, hey, I want to take my family to a game at Protective Stadium to see this program because they're exciting to watch and they win a lot of big games. And, you know, this is a kudos to Bill Clark. You know, Bill Clark took UAB to this point, getting the big bowl win last year, you know, winning the uh, – uh, uh, winning the Boca Raton Bowl, too, against a good right. Northern Illinois team. So we are taking those steps towards doing that, but we just need to need to see it a little more. And I think that we will in right. the future. Right. We keep on getting those opportunities. And the thing that I heard from you is kind of a cycle, right? You know, we, mm-hmm. we put out a better product. We invest. Uh, we get uh, better facilities. More people come. People enjoy the atmosphere. Right. Guess who else? The main thing, the people that enjoy the atmosphere, we know we bring in these guys, right? We bring in mm-hmm. these guys, they check it out. They're called recruits. Yep. <laughs> and we <laughs> have a lot of good ones here. Yes. Down here. If we can find a way and keep on finding, because we, we have been doing that. Mm-hmm. So if we can find a way just to build up more and more, and, and they come and they get excited and they say, hey, I want to, I see where this is going. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, so we started getting some a lot of these marquee guys. We got a couple on the team now. Oh and yeah. That's how, and, and that's how it built up. So it, it's a cycle, right? And if mm-hmm. we bring those guys, they wanna they love the atmosphere. They they wanna put on for the home team. They wanna take it to the next level. And then we attract more out of state guys. We got we got good pipeline set up. Where you think we got Debo from? Mm-hmm. You know, we got a good pipeline down in Florida. We got we got good roots and good places. We got good connections in JUCO areas. So um, it's a cycle, and I think uh, that cycle is continuing to grow for us, man. Definitely agree. Well, all right, guys, well, we've been a little over 30 minutes. I, I do just have a couple of uh, just, I guess, quick notes that we want to give or a shout-out. You know, we mentioned Andy Kennedy a couple of times uh, about his basketball program on the south side. Yes, sir. Hey, yes, contract sir. extension through the 2027 to 2028 season. Uh, that's, congrats, that's Coach. Yes, and he's going to get an annual increase of $100,000 per year each year of that contract. So kudos to Coach Kennedy in getting that, and, and well-deserved. Well-deserved. Um, man, you see, we uh, I've been looking on Twitter, and I've been looking at different places. You see whose backcourt is ranked pretty highly nowadays. It's UAB? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Andy Kennedy. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped about this, uh, this year coming up, you know. But we got a little football to get – Get first, but I'm, Def- I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Definitely. And speaking of football, guys, uh, this Wednesday, July 27th, uh, Conference USA Media Day in Frisco, Texas. Uh, it is going to be televised on ESPN Plus at 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, but you can catch Will Reichard and Will Bowler, you know, representing UAB. Uh, again, that's at 10 o'clock uh, Central Time in the morning on ESPN Plus. And also next week, guys, uh, Darian and I are going to drop an episode just kind of going over, uh, you know, the start celebrating the start of football's fall camp. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of go over kind of what we expect or what we want to see, you know, um, heading into fall camp and just inching ever so closely to that game against Alabama A&M um, in a few weeks. Um, but if you're not already, make sure that you are following our podcast or subscribe to our podcast, the Blazer Victory podcast on a podcast flat platform whether that's apple podcast spotify our radio youtube wherever you're listening to us now or if it's on podbean wherever you're listening to us right now go ahead and hit that follow or subscribe button so you do not miss any future episodes uh from darian and i um and um follow us on twitter at uh, blazerpod twitter.com slash blazerpod uh but we'll be back next week to kind of get into discussing some fall camp some more football uh darian anything else before we wrap it up Oh, yeah, I'm just I'm excited to get into that discussion. Uh, you know, <laughs> the the fall count, man. We get into the X's and O's, the Jimmy and the Joes, and what we what we um the the promise that we see in certain players. Because you know, the, you know, this year we'll be able to see some new players get out there and and, and see what they got. You know, we had a couple guys leave, but I am excited about the guys that we have and the potential yes. that they have uh, to shine forward, man, going forward. So. I'm excited to talk about it, man. I'm ready to to get into it. Yes. And, guys, you know, like I said, we're getting so close to that September 1st matchup against Alabama A&M. Uh, but we'll be back next week uh, to get into some fall camp discussion. But, as always, guys, go Blazers. We'll be back next week. <laughs>